I want to welcome you to God's presence. Praise God. <clears throat> it is our time of results. And we are experiencing results in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, um, like I always believe, and also the Bible have always shown, that everything in life has prices to pay. Praise the Lord. Um, there is nobody that ever succeeds significantly without paying a price. As a matter of fact, everything in life has a price. If you want a certificate, you have to pay a price of your time. And if you want to rise in love, we have to pay prices. And then in the kingdom, some of the price we have to pay is the price of praying and fasting and waiting on God. Hallelujah. That is why even though it's our season of result, we have to pay certain prices to see the result manifest in our life. That is why we have declared five Fridays of vigils. Hallelujah. Starting from this Friday. And then you can join it up with prayer and fasting. Three days prayer and fasting. If you have not fasted for three days before, this is an opportunity to fast. We will start on Friday and end on Sunday. After the service, you can break. If you cannot go three days straight, you can go Friday and break in the evening. Saturday and break in the evening. And then Sunday and break after the service. Hallelujah. The vigil is starting 11 p.m. Ending 5 p.m. 5 a.m. No choir administration. We may have a watch charge for 30 minutes. No wearing of suit. No wearing of native. Come with sleepers free. To pray. Hallelujah. No need of suit. No need of native. No need of any corporate. We are coming to pray. To see, to see God. No need of perfume. No need of makeup. Just come. We need a change in our life. So we are hitting the ground praying. If you came and then you want to sleep, it's your life. Hallelujah. For all of us here, we are coming to pray. We must see a change in our life. And there will not be change until we pray. Until we, there are forces resisting us. The people that serve the devil are death. Paying prizes to the people that serve the devil is normal. They know they need to make a sacrifice. You go at the junctions in this city, you see sacrifice because they know they need to. They know that they need to kill somebody. They need to, they need to shed blood. They need to do certain things to appease their spirit. That is the way we need to pray to break these forces. Hallelujah. Over our life, we are here praying. You sleep, you wake up, you pray. Midnight hour is an, a midnight prayer is a sensitive time to pray. So we are here praying 11 a.m. Hallelujah. We are here in the church. We will be here before 11, but the prayer is starting from 11. So that people will not be tired. But we are here praying. Not five minute prayer and then we change. We pray up point and release us for 20 minutes. We are praying. Until our life changes. Come on, are we together? Success in life is not only tied only. Not only. I'm not saying it's not relevant to our certificate. You can have a certificate that will not amount to anything. Some people have certificate and they will never use it. They will never for anything tangible. We need to break these forces and become all that we are meant to be. Hallelujah. So five Fridays, five vigils, all the Fridays, weekend, three days fast. Hallelujah. We need to break through. I always taught us on the power of early success. And I know you'll be here to pray for the sake of your destiny and for the sake of your children. Hallelujah. Secondly is we are also on a verge on inviting people to church and then getting the church to be planted. You know, after service on Sunday, um, God doesn't speak to me every day, but he leads me every day. What I mean by that is God does not audibly talk to me. I say, you, move like, like, audible talk. But God leads us every day. But we don't hear his voice necessarily every day. Nobody hears the voice like, every day, well, go here, go here. No, but you see his leading. No, on Sunday after service, I was in the house and the Lord was talking to me. He was talking about the need to get people saved and the need to get people planted. So when the Lord was talking to me, he said, I am abusing my members. That was the word God used. So I was like, God, how am I abusing my members? Then he explained to me. Now give me your phone, let me see. Then he explained to me the meaning of the word abuse. Abuse means, take a sit down. Abuse means abnormal use. Are we together? Now, this is a machine. Because this is, phone is very expensive. I know it's a very expensive techno. 
Somebody, there is somebody using this phone only to make calls and watch videos and movies. And you know what this phone can do? This is where he's using his crypto work. Using, and you see a lot of apps. This phone is literally a machine. But somebody is using this phone only to make calls and do WhatsApp and watch movies. And then the Lord told me that is an abuse of this phone. Is it correct? Yes, that was the word God explained to me and I know I understood. Because ab- abuse means abnormal use. That means when you are underusing something, you are abusing it. Do you understand? Yes. So that some, something like, like, like a car that should be able to run a fast speed car, you're always moving on 20. You're abusing that car. So what that the Lord means by I'm abusing the members God has given us because I have not gotten us into the work of the ministry. There are many of us that can do more than what we are doing in the kingdom for souls. Maybe winning souls, inviting people and getting them established. Hallelujah. Now today we started that was on the school class with how many members? Is it five of them? How many are there? Eh? Four plus. But they are, you are not counting. Four of them. Okay, it's three plus go there four. Okay. See, all of these four members or three members are from one of us. We wouldn't have started on the school if I did not say invite somebody. Are we seeing it? We wouldn't really grow if we don't get involved. We need to ensure and insist that people get saved and you invite them to church. Let them come and hear the word. You will never grow as a Christian without a local church. And there are many people not going to church and they are believers. They are not, it's not as if they have a church or they are not going. Even if they claim they belong to a particular church, when last did they go? Or why are they committed? They are not committed anywhere. And this city is a Christian city. Are we together? Please. We need to get involved. And why the Lord told me is I'm abusing members because I have not preached this enough. I have not encouraged us enough. I have not pushed us enough to be able to get people to do it. And I'm telling you, I'm ready to use you for God. <laughs> Anybody here that has the ability of winning 200 souls, I will push you till you reach 230. I will push you until you become a preacher. Come on, now together. I will push you until your potentials come out. So I'm ready to use us to the maximum. And then I know you'll be ready for God to use you. Come on, are we, are we together? You will you be ready for God to use you? Some of you, God has given you five talents. Some of you, God has given you two talents. Some of you, God has given you one talent. The little thing that God has given you, which is not really little, I will encourage you to use it. Are we together? Please, be bold for the sake of the kingdom. Be bold to invite some. Tell somebody, I need you to be in church. You need to be in church on Sunday morning. You need to be in church on Wednesday evening. You know, yesterday somebody was telling me, you know, recently that he, he listened to one of our messages that we preach over 10 times. And the, really, and I gave hearing message from people. That means people need to hear the messages. Come on, now we're together. So please do somebody a favor. All of us here are educated. So seeing you every time means you are learning something. So do somebody the same favor. Get them to hear the word of God. Hallelujah. That are the people that will never forget you in this life. Encourage them. Even if they are teenagers, we have some in the school. If the person is a teenager, we will start a teenager class. Anyhow, get the person to church. And I will tell you, 20 years from now, they will say, thank you. That you caused me to hear that preaching. One preaching can change their life. Is there anybody here that one preaching change your life forever? Is there anybody here? Let me see your hands up. Maybe one, it was just one preaching that changed your life. See, that is the same thing you can do for somebody. Get them to hear. Maybe it was not even everything they said in the preaching. Maybe one word. Maybe one example. Maybe somebody's testimony. Just one thing. So do that for somebody and a lot of blessings. So this Sunday, we are on our project Anakazo. Hallelujah. So invite somebody and hold their hands and bring them to church. Either the first service by seven. To nine or the second service by nine to eleven. Please do something for Jesus. And I know the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And then also, we are supposed to have pushed our messages further than we have pushed them. 
I noticed that people that stream our messages on YouTube and then all the people that have been asking for the messages during convention are people that have passed here and then few people that have listened to the messages online. Now yesterday somebody called me from Auchi. He said that he stumbled on my message on Ninja Sermons. Yes, and then he downloaded and then he listened and he was blessed. I just felt we need to push the messages more. Hallelujah. How can we push it more? By getting more people to subscribe. Many of us here can give us a good tutorial on YouTube algorithm. How the messages are passed is the more people you have subscribed to your channel, the more they share your content. Uh, is that correct? Yes. The more people you have, and then the more people liking, and the more likes and comments are important and shares. So we need to share our messages. We need to get more people to subscribe. Come on, are we together? So how many of us can give us two subscribers before Friday? Only two. Can you get two people to subscribe before Friday? What I mean by subscribe is make sure that you get their phones and see that they click on that subscribe button. Not that you just share the links on your WhatsApp status. No. Active subscribers. So who is promising to do that? Hallelujah. The Lord will bless your efforts in the name of Jesus Christ. So two before Friday. Hallelujah. And every time you do that, I will pray for you. Get their phones. Search Apostle J.B. Adam. That is the channel. Or get the link to them and let them click on the subscribe button. And let's get the messages to more. Praise God. And I know the Lord will bless us mightily. I need the immortals to compose songs on evangelism. On soul winning. On coming to church. Before August. Praise God. The emo- we need songs on Sunday. On evangelism. On soul winning. On being planted. Are we together? And before August, we should have all these songs sung on Sunday morning. So you wait on God enough to receive the songs or compose. We already looked at it. And the Lord help you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Alright, it is our month of songs and my topic this evening is mood and songs. Your mood. James chapter 5 verse 13. Mood. Your mood and songs. How the mood you are in affects songs you listen to. And how your mood affects you. Hallelujah. I will have Ask doctor here to give us a talk on mood, but I know he will not like it. So I did a little research on mood. Praise the Lord. So let's look at James chapter 5 verse 13 first. James 5 13. Is anyone among you afflicted? Let him pray. That is why we are praying. Then is anyone merry? King James, that means is anyone happy? Let him what? Sing psalms. This one says what? Sing psalms. It will mean sing songs. So that means the Bible says, if you are happy, sing. Hallelujah. And then if you are afflicted, pray. Our mood refers to our mental and emotional state. The state of your mind, the state of your emotions, refers to your mood. Or your mood refers to your prevalent atmosphere of feelings. Now, this you need to know about, like I said, my little study about mood and signs. Our hormones, our facial expressions, the kind of feeding or nutrition, or the environment we are in, lack of sleep, all these are the factors that affect our mood. Your hormones in your body, because I got to know that hormones is a very, very delicate part of medicine. Your facial expression can affect your mood. Your nutrition can affect your mood. Your environment can affect your mood. Lack of sleep can affect your mood. But then I got this very interesting information that said, our moods, can last for hours while emotions only last for seconds and minutes. Now, emotions are a factor of hormones. 
So in seconds, your, your emotions can change. That is why you can be happy and then in seconds you can become angry. You can be angry and in a second you are laughing. But your mood can last. You can be in a mood for a long hour. Are we together? That is science. Number two. Emotions can be triggered. There are certain things you can do to trigger the emotions of people. There are things you can say to somebody and the person can become angry. There are things you can say to somebody and the person can become happy or jubilant. But then our mood has no scientific trigger. I was shocked when I saw this information. Like, there is no scientific trigger to move. That is why I always teach on what the Bible teaches on depression. Because depression is a mood that is influenced by a demonic spirit. Hallelujah. So emotions can be triggered by signs, but our mood doesn't, they say that they could not trace a trigger point. Number three, what I got from signs is mood do not have their own unique facial expression. Whereas universal emotions have facial expressions. Somebody's mood does not have a unique facial expression unlike emotions. Example, when somebody is happy, they have an emotion for that. Like they have a facial expression, like the person smiles, right? You can easily know when somebody is happy by their facial expression. You can easily know when somebody is angry by their facial expression. But they say, somebody's mood does not have a particular facial expression. That means somebody can be in a bad mood and still be looking normal. Somebody can be depressed and still be looking normal facially. Come on, now together. Yes. Somebody can be going through a daily situation and still be looking normal facially. So, mood don't have unique facial expression. Example, do you know the facial expression for depression? Can somebody do it? You see, we don't know it. But we all know the facial expression for anger and smile. That's why we even have emojis for smiling. So, universally, there are no facial expressions to move. So, like joyful mood. Somebody can be joyful. There are people that their face is just naturally strong, even if they are joyful. You cannot see it on their face. And then finally, science also shows that our moods are affected by our temperament. That means temperament affects the moods of people. When I say temperament, I, know, I believe you know what is temp the temperament, right? Melancholy, sanguine, choleric, and then the phlegmatics. There are people that are easily happy because of their mood. When they enter the light of the room, when they are, because they are sanguine, like normally they are excited, happy beings. But then melancholy, that's what they say, melancholic music. Da, 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 da. They say melancholy. You know, if you watch American movie, they say melancholy music on the background. Because melancholic are always moody, calm people. They don't want to talk. They don't like people. So they are easily sad and easily angry. They are not excited. Same with choleric. Because choleric are concerned about results. Concerned about outcomes. But also phlegmatic are always calm. They are in between. So the lively one on this extreme are sanguine. And then the other one on the other side is the melancholic and choleric people. So if you are naturally sanguinous, you will always have a happy mood. Always excited. But then when you are other temperament, it also affect your mood. That's why they, we always teach on spirit control temperament by Tim Lahai. Have you read the book? It's good we read it. So that no matter your temperament, you get the balance in the word of God. And what, what it means is if you are naturally choleric and then you are behaving in a way that is a character way in the Bible, you should behave. So the spirit control temperament helps you to balance up with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So, like I said, science have taught us that emotions last for seconds or minutes, but moods last for hours and can last for days. Emotions can be triggered, but mood has no scientific trigger. That is clearly telling us that the mood we are in is influenced by the spirit upon us. Hallelujah. 
Number three, I said mood have no unique facial expression like emotions do. And moods are clearly influenced by temperament. So your environment affects your mood most times. I read a statistic one time that said Nigeria is one of the happiest countries in the world. Why? Because we dance a lot. Another statistic says Africa is one of the most happiest con- continents in the world. Why? Because Africa are nonchalant and they are free going beings. We laugh, we play a lot. And then country like Jamaica, country like North America, country like Brazil, where we have a lot of violence. And always everybody is careful. Everybody is carefree. Nobody is calm. Like tension is everywhere. You understand me? So w- w- your environment affects your mood. A negotiant is naturally, <laughs> they have the way they behave. Maybe they shout a lot. Or they, there is no slow motion in Lagos at all. They are fast. They are, their car doesn't stop for you to enter. The vehicle never reverses. So, if you want anything, you have to go for it. You see a married woman entering a car through the window. I want you watch you'll be shocked. Hallelujah. You see the car. It's just, it's just the environment. But my experience there was bad. Hallelujah. Went for a bunch of crusade and then I was stopping cars and then they were passing, stopping cars and they were passing. So somebody said, oh, but you know, they go here. You know what? You know what? Move back. I said, what? I said, no, I was stopping there. They're not stopping. <laughs> so the guy said, you have to jump inside. <laughs> okay. So when one came and slowed down like the rest, because they will slow down and move, slow down and move. I didn't know that that slow down means enter. So when one came and slowed down, then I entered. I was with my 1,000 Nera note. So, we have to, I said, no, you look for the chain. I said, get, get down from here. Rub me down. I was shocked. <laughs> because here, the person will come down, I'm going to look for a change for you. And you wait for the person in the car. Yeah, that's what happened in local here, right? Yeah, that's what happened here. Even Canada is like, you, the person will, you'll be in the car. And shout at the person, give my change now. They drop me down. So, I had to look for, like, I remember, I had to buy a drink to have change. All the ones that are coming, they have changed. No, move. Yeah, I was like, but oh, you're empty. <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's the environment. Hallelujah. If you are there, you have to be fast. You have to be energetic. Then if you are in a, it's in the environment that are calm, reserved, people don't shout a lot, people don't talk. So it affects your mood most times. Hallelujah. Somebody recently told me he got a job and they say, Lagos life is not easy. You have to wake up 5 a.m. and return home by 8. Home by 8. And then he left from a peaceful state to that Lagos. So our environment matters. Hallelujah. Now there are two types of mood. Two types of mood you can be in. We have what we call a positive mood. Or a good mood. Or a happy mood. You can either be in a positive mood. Or a happy mood. Or a good mood. Number two, we have negative mood, bad mood, and sad mood. Should I come again? So these are the moods we have positive or negative, good or bad, happy or sad. Now, how does mood affect us with songs and singing in church? Our moods Pour inspirations for the songs we sing and the songs we compose. In Exodus 15 verse 20 and Isaiah chapter 12, the whole of Isaiah chapter 12, but Exodus 15 verse 20 is the story of Miriam when they crossed the Red Sea with Moses. And then the Bible says she stood up and began singing and she sang songs of victory. So if you are here into singing or you compose songs, you know that the mood you are in affects you. You know, one day I was asking Pastor Min, Pastor Min produced beats for songs. I said, I know, recently I'm not be hearing you talking about your beats for songs. He said that, ah, he says, it has not been in the mood. It has not been in the vibe because it affects your composition. Hallelujah. Even myself that write messages or do certain things, I discovered that our mood affects our composition. Hallelujah. So if you want to compose, even if you want to write books, and if you have written books before, you discover that 
there is a particular mood you need to write. There's a particular mood that inspiration will not flow. You need to be in a particular free, excited mood. Number two, the mood can affect your reactions to song. Let's look at Proverbs 25 verse 20. The mood you are in can affect your reactions to songs. These are powerful scriptures. Proverbs 25 verse 20. The mood you are in can affect your reactions to songs. Proverbs 25 verse 20. Are we there? As he that taketh away a garment in cold weather and as vinegar upon neat, so is he that what? Singeth songs to an heavy heart. When the heart of somebody is heavy, just like those examples above, that is the way the person will react to songs. There is a position, that is why when you come to church and then you have a bad news or you, something bad happened to you, you don't enjoy the praise and worship session. You enjoy the worship session more because that one is calm and cooler. Come on, are we together? It affects the way you react to songs. Your mood affects it. If you are happy, there are songs you want to listen to. And most of them, they are danceable songs. More than they are fast songs. More than a song that steer you. And then when you are moody, when you are calm, when you want to think, when you want to meditate, you prefer calm, cold, melancholic songs. Why? Because they are calm. So your mood affects the way you react to songs. Even when somebody is singing in church. Hallelujah. That is why we must have all the songs, kind of song. We must have praise and worship in the song because to appease the happy people, and to appease the hungry people. Because in every service, it's just somebody here that is, that came here with a bad, maybe you're not happy for the service. Something like, is there anybody like that here? All of us here came, okay, that means, the rest of us came with good news. But there is somebody, maybe you had a bad news before service. Maybe your boyfriend just shouted at you, or a girlfriend just shouted at you, or the person didn't pick your call, or somebody just broke your heart, or somebody, your boss talked to you, anyhow, or something negative happened. Or somebody missed it. Is there anybody like that today? When you came to service, you see two people cannot comfort you. Hallelujah. Now, and then there are people here that came happy. See, the two of them, the part, the song that we enjoy more today is worship. Hallelujah. Those cold songs. <laughs> when we are dancing, they'll just be, they'll encourage themselves to move. But the rest of us here that came with good news, you will be happy, you will be happier doing praise and worship. So our mood affects the way we react to songs. Number three, our mood have the power to condition the songs we choose. I will give us a small illustration very soon. Psalms 137 verse 1 to 3. Our mood condition the songs we sing. Psalms 137 verse 1 to 3. Are we on? Hallelujah. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive. Oh, for there they carried us away captive, required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us myth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Then they said, verse 4, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How many of us have ever picked your phone and then you discover that you begin to scroll, you scroll, you scroll. No, this one is scroll. And you begin to select songs. Have ever happened to you before? What is controlling you at that moment is your mood. Because the song you just scroll past, another mood you play it. There are days you, at the time you carry your phone, you feel like singing, we are getting bigger every day. Bigger every day. You understand? You want to sing? Hallelujah. There's a song you want to say sometimes even the vibes differ. Even if it's danceable, so your mood affects your songs. Sometimes you want to play Dormoy. 
God will make a way where he seems to be all affected by your move, mood. Hallelujah. So even the songs you choose to play, the songs you choose to listen to is dictated by your mood. But mature people, you must learn to live above your mood. So that when you need to worship and your mood is bad, you need to worship. When you need to praise and you don't feel like, as a matter of fact, you don't have a reason to praise. You have to overcome your mood and praise. Come on, now we're together. Mature people have learned to live above their mood. They live in what they should do. Like, what should I be doing now? I should be praising God. So your mood affects and condition the song you listen to. And then finally, number four, your mood can inspire you to sing songs that are aligned to your mood. Keys to having a positive mood, always. To be happy, always. Keys to having good mood when singing. Keys to having happy mood. Number one, let the fruit of the Holy Spirit develop in you. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 22, the Bible mentions the fruit of the Spirit. And two of the top is peace and joy. Now, peace means based or are affected by what is happening around you. But joy is irrespective of what is happening around you. So joy you know that what the Bible said? It is better to be in a house full of joy and then you eat a morsel of bread than to be in a house with a brawling woman with plenty meat. We must learn to allow joy to be our experience no matter what is happening. We must not look at like our problem always. Come on, now we together. Somebody once said, I read his post. He said, dressing good does not mean hyping yourself or living a fake life. We must not look like our problems. I would together. You may not have Gucci or Louis Vuitton. Iron the black and white that you have. Starch it and polish the shoe. Bab your hair, 250. If you don't have the money that's even, you don't have the money to go to expensive barbing salon, go to a 250, 200 and beg. The one that you lighter to clean the clipper. Doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Let your problem not look like you. That is the way your face must not look like your problem. Like when we look at your face, the expression shows that you are finished. Cultivate joy. Because what is, what you are doing is, you are empowering the people that are harming you. Because I've noticed that if I do this, I can make you angry. Because there are people in Lokoja and then there's somebody that's making them angry. The person making them angry is in Lagos. I think it's like, like, they are in Lokoja here. But the person making them angry is in Lagos. Especially those in this relationship. The person here is there angry. <laughs> and the partner is far. And then you drop the call and you are here angry with us here. <laughs> you come to church and we see anger. And then the person is in Lagos. Maybe eating God now. Just live as a movement. Because end the call, then move on his life. And then your facial expression here does not affect him there. Come on, out together. And then if somebody wants to make you angry, the person learn to weaken your enemy by doing the opposite of what they expect. When they expect to see you cry and be happy. Kill them with your laughter. Kill them with your joy. When they expect to bring pain to you, react with excitement. That is more dangerous to them. Babu says, forgiving your neighbor is like heaping coals on fire on them. They will be, why is this guy not angry? They will, at the end, they will be the one that will be hot. So develop joy. Be filled with the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Instead of the angry, the devil is expecting you to be crying. And then you are here dancing like a mad person. Come on, are we together? So allow the fruit of the Spirit flow in you. Be happy. Be joyful. Be excited. Be full of the Holy Ghost. Number two. 
Develop your knowledge in the word of God. And have faith in God. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28. The Bible says all things work together for what? So anything happening now, so long as it is not your cause, is working for your good. At the end, you will thank God for it. Somebody today asked me a question in the office. Said, how do I overcome challenges of life? So how do I solve the challenges of my life? Then I told the person, there are three ways you can analyze challenges. One is, there is a word in the Bible, the Bible called trials. Have you ever seen that word in the Bible? Trials. That is what we, some people call dealings of God. That was some people call trainings of God. Sometimes God can keep you in the wilderness to train you. God will not allow the money to come to your hand to train you. God will not allow. So that sometimes God can try you and train you. Another way challenges come to people is by the person's problems. Or the person's fault. And then another way challenges come to people is from the devil. The devil attack you. So understanding the source of your challenge affects the way you react to it. So that is why in Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Develop your knowledge about God and be filled with the whole knowledge of faith. Colossians 3.16 Say let the word of God dwell richly in you. Hallelujah. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of Christ Dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. So having knowledge about the word of God and being filled with faith. Affect the way you react and controls your mood. Sometimes, no matter what is happening, you just discover that your knowledge about the word of God gives you confidence that it will not always be like this. Come on, out together. That things are changing. That it will not remain like this. So, uh, build your knowledge on the word of God. Want to know. Inquire. Have faith. Number three. Rest in the confidence of God. Keys to having positive mood. Happy mood. No matter what is happening, believe. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 8, it says, be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God. Also, Job chapter 19 verse 25, Job says that, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Rest in faith in God. Have faith in God. Rest your joy on Him. Rest your confidence on Him. Because when your confidence in him is on God, you will always have hope. And you will always be positive instead of becoming negative and cynical. So rest in God. Say, I rest in God. Come on, say, Lord, I rest in you. I put my trust in you. That all things are working together for my good. Number four, listen to anointed music always. Because anointed musics have the power to cast out demons in us. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 16 and 23 spoke about David playing and then the evil spirit in the life of Saul will go. Many times demons are played into our lives by the kind of songs we listen to. Come on, are we together? The way, because when they, the Bible says, 1 Samuel 16, verse 16. Alright, let me read. Let our Lord now command thy servant which are before thee to seek out a man who is cunning player on the harp, and it shall come to pass when the evil spirit is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. From God, they are not actually from God. I was trying to explain God has left soul. So the way evil spirits are played into the life of people, Evil spirit can be casted by listening to anointed songs. So, when you feel depressed, when you begin to feel sad, when you begin to feel negative, listen to anointed songs. 
and then your mood will come alive. Hallelujah. Anytime you have the tendency of depression, never forget I said depression is an evil spirit. Come on, now we together. Look for gospel songs and play. It takes away the spirit out of your life. God always expected us to sing and minister to him gladly. To be happy. God expected to sing songs that are melodious to him and minister to him despite our mood. So that the Bible says, come to he, come to me, ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So don't always allow your emotions to influence and manipulate other people in church. When you come and then you are happy, and then they are doing worship, don't be angry at the person leading worship and say it should play five songs. Hallelujah. Because that is selfishness, that is a manipulation. Don't allow your mood to affect us in the congregation. And then if you are leading songs, don't allow the mood of the people to make you succumb. To change the song that the Holy Spirit is leading you. But we are led by faith and not by sight. Sometimes you can be singing this on the congregation, be looking at you like this. Don't be moved. I'm singing to music ministers now. Are we understanding? The song the Holy Spirit put in your mind, sing it. But then you too, once in a while, discern the mood of the people. <laughs> like after a miracle, what kind of song are we expecting? Praise. Hallelujah. Not a worship song. Because sometimes if people are expecting you, that, that there's a general mood in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Yes. Or we just, we just finish observing one minute silence for somebody. And then you take the mic and you begin to sing praise. See, it, it doesn't balance. Sometimes just observe. You know one minute silence when somebody dies? Actually, it's never up to one minute. Because silence is powerful. One minute silence is never up to one minute. But to be silent for a minute is powerful. So silence is powerful. So after a minute silence, when you sing a worship song, that will <laughs> help the people. Or let's say during wedding, and then they say, let the couple come in. And then you are singing reggae. It doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it just doesn't balance. So you observe the mood and be sensitive. <laughs> but there are times you need to flow with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. What's happening? <laughs> Is it a reggae example? Hallelujah. So your mood affecting you, you learn to manage your mood well in songs and in church. Hallelujah. And the Lord will help you mightily. And help our music ministers mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you learn something about mood today? What kind of the mood will you choose to control and have? A positive mood is possible. It can happen. A good mood. A happy mood. Nobody likes to be around angry people. Come on out together. Yes, be happy. Let everybody enjoy your presence. I used to think smiling is for the weak. But actually, smiling is for the strong. Gangsterism and youthful exuberance will tell you to burn your face. Even they will take you for granted. That actually means weakness. So like, the people that bully others, you will think they are strong. But actually, they are the cowards at heart. Strong people love. Because the force of love is stronger than violence. If you watch Idi Amin smiling. Come on, now together. Yes. But weak people are happy. After the devil attacks you, a sign of strength is excitement. Violence, tension, sadness, frowning is a sign you are weak. And you easily react. That means the devil can make you angry. You see, there are people that they can, you can easily be made angry. That's why the Bible says, he that is quick to anger is a fool. Because the strong people are not easily angered. It takes a lot to anger a strong man. So control your mood while singing and while in church when we are worshiping. Don't forget we are still in the month of songs. When you are singing, don't allow your mood to influence your singing to God. No, normally I notice myself too before. I would like to play based on the mood. But then when I learned about the power of lyrics and what the song is saying, I began to play songs based on what they are saying. 
Come on, now together. Yes. So grow and begin to place based on what the song is saying, not based on the mood or based on what you want to do. And I believe the Lord will coordinate your mood. If you are in a bad mood, the Lord is bringing you to a good mood. And then if the devil is calculating a negative mood for you, the Lord is, has empowered you with wisdom to be able to stay out of that mood. May you have rooms that are full of joy and excitement. May God surround you with people that are happy, excited, jubilant. May God put a smile on your face. You know, after the miracle service, I saw somebody I prayed for. I saw the face of the person when the person came for miracle service. One of the greatest signs of deliverance and healing, you see that even the face will change. Uh, it, like the physically, you know, something has left this person. Like the face all became bright. Life. Come on, now together. The Holy Spirit always put a smile on your face. Come on, now together. Now let's be on our feet and I'm going to take authority over any negative mood. Any mood the devil has put out that is negative. First of all, say, Lord, I thank you for your word. I receive grace to live a positive mood. To have a good mood. To have a happy mood. I choose happiness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I speak over these people, over every one of them. Any one of them influenced by negative spirit and you are experiencing negative feelings, anger, a negative mood. I declare that the hand of the Lord come upon you and give you joy, happiness, positivity in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak life to your spirit in the name of Jesus. I speak joy to your life. I speak an atmosphere of excitement, an atmosphere of joy, an atmosphere of jubilation in and around you in the name of Jesus Christ. When the devil throw a reason for you to be angry, you will be happy. When the devil throw a reason for you to be discouraged, you will be motivated in the name of Jesus Christ. As we partake the communion, the Lord is imparting fresh life to you. Fresh mood. Hallelujah. I've got joy, 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 oh joy, 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 overflow. In my life, I've got joy, joy, joy. Joy, oh joy, 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 joy overflow. I've got peace, 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 peace. Oh, peace, peace, peace. peace, peace. Yeah. Yeah. communion in case you came here sick that the Lord heal your body in the name of Jesus I declare over your mind anyone here suffering from depression you are suffering from hopelessness the spirit of the Lord is coming upon you right now to heal 
to deliver from that depression and the lord is it positivity means you believe your life can change you believe the future is bright you believe that it will not always be like this but when you are negative you feel like it's all over in one era is one dollar is equal to six hundred dollars there is hopelessness but i encourage faith and peace to you The compass you need has just been delivered into your hands. You can get all the anointed messages on our Telegram channel at Shekinah Encounter Center Sermons. For more inquiries, you can also call 080-6522-6276 or 080-261-2114. Remain rapturable, 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 rapturable.